We're going to look at this concept of elasticity now that's important in economics, a very useful tool. In actual fact, there's five elasticities. In this course, we'll be looking at to change this to five, not four. But in this course, we'll only be looking at maybe four of them. Uh, the, and, and in this specific uh, lecture, we'll look at the, something called the own price elasticity, this one here. Uh, the, uh, these first three concern the demand curve of consumers, so these are the ones we'll be looking at uh, before, the, uh, uh, the, before we look at the firm or cost theory. Uh, the supply elasticity, these last two concern firms, and I don't think we'll have time to do this one. Uh, so let's start with this concept of an elasticity, which is peculiar to economics. I'm not aware of it being used in other disciplines. It may be, may be used in a slightly different uh, uh, interpretation. So. Imagine we've got, for example, here the, the market for cigars. We've got a supply and demand curve, and uh, we've got an equilibrium uh, where it happens to be um, $6 for a price of a package of cigarettes. And here I've got on the quantity millions of packages, so it's $120 million, let's say. And now uh, imagine there's a change, there's an excise tax uh, applied on cigarette manufacturers, which means that the, uh, let's say, the supply curve, as a result, uh, the supply curve shifts to the left. So firms are less willing to, uh, to uh, sell uh, cigarettes because they're being taxed now. So now we've got a new equilibrium where uh, we can see that the, uh, the new price, market price, is going to be $10 of the price paid by consumers. And there's going to be only 80 million uh, packages of cigarettes sold. So, so far, straightforward. Uh, how do we measure this change in the price? And how do we measure the consequent change in the quantity sold? That's what we're interested in, the idea of elasticity. Mathematicians have the concept of slope. We'd be looking at, the, in effect, the, the slope of the demand curve, which is negative. We can calculate, calculate this. We see the quantity sold changes from 120 to 80, so it's minus 40. The price goes from 6 to $10. Uh, in terms of slope, we would say it's the change of the vertical distance uh, divided by the horizontal, something like the rise versus divided by the run. In mathematics or in economics, we talk about the change in the price, which you'll notice is plus four. The price goes up by four dollars, and the quantity sold, that's a dollar sign there, uh, the quantity sold decreases by 40 million. So we can figure this out. I think it's going to be minus, what is that, 0 0.1. So mathematics talk about the slope. There's some problems with this, though, at least in economics. So I'm going to take a little take a look at these specifically two problems. The first one is units of measure. So let's say I'm, I've got Canadian or US dollars here. What happens if I switch it to Japanese yen? Well, there's about 100 yen to $1. So that would mean that the two prices would be uh, 600 yen to 1,000, which would be a change of 400. We couldn't use the four anymore. So now the slope becomes 400 divided by minus four. It's going to be minus 10. So in other words, the idea of slope varies on which country or which units you're measuring, which would be complicated if you wanted to compare demand curves in different places. But it's not simply the units of measure for money. What happens if we change it to individual cigarettes, not millions of packages? Well, then we have something like billions of cigarettes down here. This I was like 20, 20 cigarettes per package. You have to multiply everything by 20. Then this, this 40 number down here would change as well. And so the end result is that it's very difficult to make comparisons between different markets, different goods because of units. That's the two problems. This is the first, first problem. Second problem that's uh, a little bit, again, more related to economics, and it's the basis of a problem the way the curve is, driven, uh, is drawn. The price actually is the independent variable. The quantity is the dependent variable. This is reversed from the way it's done in mathematics. But in, in, in simple terms, in economics, we're primarily concerned with how a price change leads to a quantity change. Whereas you'll notice in mathematics, it's the change in X changing Y or change in Q changing Y. So we really want to go from price to quantity. So we'd have to inverse. You'll notice this is inversed here. I'm going to turn this upside down. So we want to do this first and then the quantity change second. Because we're thinking, well, the price changes as due to the change in the tax, and what consequence or what result does this have to do the quantities, uh, quantities bought or sold? Okay. 
an economist in this in the 19th century, uh, an economist by the name of Alfred Marshall came up with the concept of elasticity, and that's what I'm going to show you. What what the first one I'll show you is called own price elasticity of demand. You'll notice the symbol that's used for it looks like this very standard now. The last 20 years or so, 30 years, they've used this symbol. It's the percentage change in the quantity divided by the percentage change in the price. Uh, Bear in mind, too, the percentage change in quantity means change in quantity. The delta means change in, which you can write as, you can calculate the percentage any way you want to, but it'll always work by saying new minus old divided by old. So we got to then calculate percentage change in the price, new minus old divided by old. Let's take a look at this. One of the, the points about this is that now units of measurement don't matter. So whether we're doing it in Japanese and U.S. dollars, kilograms, pounds, bushels, whatever it is, it's always going to come out to be the same. Let's take a look at this for the case we had just a moment ago. Uh, here, I've rewritten it uh, completely as being the percentage change in the quantity. This is the, the uh, uh, numerator and the denominator. Let's take a look at this now in the case we had uh, before with uh, cigarettes. So we've got the same changes before between the two equilibrium. Uh, let's start with the percentage change in the quantity. Well, the new uh, quantity is going to be 80 minus 20, 120 divided by 120 which gives us minus 40 divided by 120, which is equal to minus 0 0.33. Percentage change in the price is going to be the same logic. If the old price is $6, the new price is $10. So as you can see, it's 4 divided by 6 gives us plus 0.66. And now if we put this all together to calculate the elasticity, and in this case, it's the own price. Of, we're looking at the price of cigarettes and how it changes the... Uh, how it changes the, the quantity demanded. Uh, we come up with minus 0 0.5. Now, what does this mean exactly? Well, here I've redrawn it again. A way to interpret this to start with, but you'll realize how useful this concept is later, but to start with, it means in, in practice is that a 10% increase in the price leads to a 5% decrease in the quantity sold. You could also say similarly, a 30% increase in the price would lead to a 15% decrease in the quantity sold. So you can apply this at different percentages. And once again, it's completely invariant to the, you know, the, whether Japanese yen or currency or pounds or whatever, because it's in percentage terms. Uh, I want to make two minor points about this uh, calculation of this uh, elasticity. I've shown it. Uh, first of all, I used the old price in the denominator to calculate the percentage. Uh, some textbooks, and I think your textbook, uses something called the, the midpoint value. In other words, instead of using uh, 120, I could use the halfway point between 80 and 120. So I could use like 100 instead of uh, 120 here. Uh, similarly, I use 6 and 10. I could have used $8 because it's the midpoint between 6 and 100. I'm going to stick with the old one. I, I, I frankly don't worry too much about this because in actual fact, if we were to do this in terms of calculus, we'd be looking at a particular point and you'll notice here then I'd be and this is what calculus is good at is is, is in effect what we're looking for it's a slope at a particular point and uh, uh, whether you choose the old point the midpoint or in calculus terms at a at a at a at a, a point of particular limit uh, discrepancy in the, in the calculation it's more the general principle that I want I'll be using this uh, calculation for the quizzes that you have uh, second point to make is that the uh, own price elasticity, we expect to be negative. The demand curve is, law of demand is that the price goes up, the quantity sold decreases. So typically, we're going to write it with absolute value terms. So sometimes it's written as mine, like for a moment ago, I wrote it as 0 0.5, or it could be just written as 0 0.5. Uh, this is for the own price. We know it's a negative number. So whether it's reported as negative or positive, it doesn't change. For the other elasticity, we'll look at something called the cross-price elasticity, the income elasticity. Well, then it does matter, the, uh, the, the, the sign. But in the case of the own price elasticity, it's generally considered to be negative. So, so let's take a look at a few cases here. Uh, the first one I'll look at is the, the, the case where the uh, elasticity is equal to minus 1. Now, that would mean that a change in Q is matched in percentage terms by a change in the price. So... Say, if the price goes up by 10%, the quantity sold decreases by 10%. Uh, this is known as a unit elastic, unit elastic demand. Uh, this case is quite interesting because if you stop and think about it, what kind of demand curve would look like this? Well, we know that the price 
times the quantity is equal to the total revenue. This is the total money that goes into the cash register of a business. If you, you sell 100 Big Macs and you, their Big Macs are $5 each, the money that goes into your cash register, not only the cost, but just the money that goes into the cash register is going to be $500. If it's unit elastic, that means if the price goes up by 10%, the quantity decreases by 10%, which means that the total revenue is always constant. So we can draw the curve now like this, which means that the square here, this area, which really is P1 times Q1, for example, uh, is equal to a new price up here of Q2 and P2. So the rectangle is always the same size, which means that the demand curve, in effect, is uh, a hyperbole. That's a special case, although it's, quite, it's actually quite common in, uh, in, in, uh, in consumer demand. In, in effect, it also means that if, uh, for example, gasoline prices increase, people will buy less gasoline, but they still send, spend the same amount of money for gasoline. Second case, where the elasticity is equal to zero. Well, what would this mean? Well, now we'd be looking at percentage change in the price leads to no change in the quantity purchased. What would the demand curve look like in this case? Well, if the quantity doesn't change at all, that means it's fixed, regardless of the price. So in this case, we can draw the demand curve like this, because you can see the price goes up by some percentage point, and the quantity purchased is invariant. This is reserved, reversed, reversed to as inelastic demand. And in fact, in this case, it's perfectly inelastic perfectly inelastic. Uh, what goods would be like this? Well, obviously, it's going to be something that people absolutely, something like medical care, open heart surgery, something where the price goes up and the person is still going to purchase it because they absolutely need it. Uh, you, you can remember this uh, example of perfectly inelastic is it looks like the capital letter I. So whenever you think of inelastic, think of the letter I. Uh, how about this case? Uh, the uh, uh, it, elasticity is equal to a very large number. So I put minus 500, just big number. Okay, let's call it like this, big number. Well, what would that look like? Well, in this case, what we're saying is, again, a relatively small change in the price leads to a big change in the quantity. So what would that look like? It would look something like this. A small change in the price leads to a very big change in the quantity, right? So this is the change in the quantity. This is the change in the price. And we refer to something like that as very elastic. Now, if it's perfectly elastic, then it becomes just a straight line, in which case, in effect, the price if the price goes up just a tiny, tiny amount, the quantity bought and sold changes tremendously. We're going to look at cases like that, but you might think of something like uh, if you're in a very, very competitive market, a business in a very competitive market where there's many, many substitutes, many people can find in, you know, another store down the street. If you, raise, if you raise your prices just a little small amount, you're going to lose all your customers because they'll just go elsewhere. So you imagine you're providing some service online. Anybody can log in and get that service from many other suppliers. If you try to have a price a little bit above the, the price of other, uh, other people, you're not offering anything different than anybody. As a result, you're going to lose all your customers. Then we'd say it's perfectly elastic. At the same time, if you could lower your prices a little bit, everybody would come to you for business because uh, you'd be cheaper than anybody else. That's, uh... Now, this last case is kind of weird. But I'll just show it to you because I find it a bit useful to understand this concept of elasticity. If it doesn't help you, just ignore it. But think of a linear demand curve like the one we've got here. If, if you imagine the situation up at the top, this point up here, it means if you just drop the price a little bit, like a little bit like this here, you're going to increase from basically nothing to something the sales that you make. So in this section up here, we'd say the demand curve is quite elastic. It's greater than one. Keep in mind the elasticity is equal to the percentage change in the quantity divided by the percentage change in the price. Uh, at some point around here, for example, if you drop the price, you can sort of imagine that this is the rectangle here. This is the quantity. This is the price. So if I drop the price a little bit, the quantity sold will increase a little bit such that 
In effect, this rectangle will stay all the same size. So just imagine at this point here, the rectangle is going to become the same size, which makes it unit elastic, so it's equal to 1. So you sort of imagine up here is that if I drop the price a little bit, I get a rectangle. If I'm a little bit up here, I have no rectangle at all. Now, down here at the bottom, if I drop the price a little bit, what happens to the size of the rectangle? It, well, it's going to go to basically zero. If I drop the price a little bit, the rectangle will be nothing. So we refer to this section down here as being inelastic. This is elastic, and this is elastic. Mm -hmm.